So good evening, everyone. And in today's class, what we are supposed to do is as discussed earlier. Today's class, you guys are the faculty over here. Three faculties I have with one student, and this is for your better understanding. Because and for me also to understand that how better you have understood till now whatever we have discussed. Have you really gone through this particular PDF, understood the basic concepts, or just read it? So we will start with random rhythm. One of you will explain it out. The others must understand and that way you should explain. And we will move further. If there are any kind of rectifications or corrections to be done, I will do that in between. So let's start with Arya. Please go on with random rhythm. What do you mean by random rhythm? Just give a quick explanation. Mm, you can proceed. Okay. So random rhythm is basically everything messed up. Like but they still create the rhythm and kind of give the sense of rhythm. Okay, so like go in a brief explanation so that others can understand what in terms of these examples, go in terms of these examples, how they give you idea about random rhythm, what do they explain to you? Uh, the different types of uh, elements are uh, included to uh, complete the composition and they, uh, they are like uh, different in various kind of textures and colors, uh, but they still give the vibe of rhythm, the okay. flow. Okay. So, yeah. uh, you know, what we try, what we should talk about over here is that, see over here, there are different sets of styles included. Okay. All these styles are there. They are included and they compose a whole set of particular like composition. They are not in a one particular directional flow or a particular movement where you can identify and tell that one particular object over here that is going to be repeated after a certain number of patterns or so. Hence, it is random. But still, as a whole, when you look at the composition, it gives you a sense of like, you know, that all similar kind of things are together. So we just made a mistake telling that different kinds are not always different kind of elements, almost similar kind of things acquainted together to give an expression of rhythm, but doesn't have a particular pattern to follow. That is all about random rhythm. Okay. Over how random rhythm is being achieved. Yeah. In this composition, how is random rhythm being achieved? Arya, you are this person supposed to talk now. The waves behind the, the waves behind continue. Hello. Yes, please continue. Yeah. The waves behind, as we talked in random direction, like uh, uh, the direction matters in rhythm. So the waves behind it gives the flow. There is the wavy structure in the uh, picture or painting. Uh, the, the, there are different directions used by every element. Like uh, the sun is in the circular direction and the waves behind it are uh, in the horizontal and the- Why rhythm? Why is this rhythm? What is the element that brings it into rhythm? What is the one element that is being repeated? The wavy structure. No, it's wrong. The pattern that... So the brush strokes, this whole painting is just made of brush strokes. There is nothing else. There is not a single place where you see that one simple color is being made, uh, like, you know, uh, given to with using a flat brush. Everything, everything from top to bottom, what you see is given by a brush strokes. Brush strokes give it a sense of rhythm, but they are not following a particular flow or they are, they are not being repeated. The similar kind of brush strokes are not being repeated after equal interval. Hence, it is in random rhythm. Clear? Okay, clear. So, okay, let's go quickly go through the other examples. Before that, let's talk about the name of the structures. First one, Karthik, first one, name of the structure. Opera House. Located in? Uh, Opera House is located where? In India. <laughs> Opera House is not located in India. I told long back Opera House, where is it located? Sydney, Australia. Make sure you remember. Okay, may I go for this next one? This one. Name of the structure? Habitat 67. Okay. Name of this one, Arya? It's City Hall, London. Sorry. Yeah. What about uh, it, this one? 
you again uh it's something saint uh, basil saint basil cathedral then basil what cathedral something saint basil cathedral uh, where is it located a uh, russia where in russia uh maybe some red square thing i i searched it but it didn't in moscow looking for the capital of like the place in terms of the state it's in moscow russia Okay, this is the general structure uh, like you know defines itself in terms of random rhythm why random rhythm because like you know there is not a particular flow and all that they have talked about but uh, if we consider I will take it more towards gra uh, graduated rhythm okay what is graduated rhythm we will see further you guys are there to explain okay I guess these uh, ones are pretty defined okay so how is random rhythm being achieved in this composition Mac? There are several paintings on the wall, but I told Mag answer. What's that? I told uh, Mag to answer. Why are you answering? Okay. Yes, Mag, please go on. Random rhythm. The things are not repeated. Uh, paintings are there, like, but they are not similar to what each is other. What is the element upon which you are considering random rhythm? I can see the railings over here. They are in a particular repetitive format. They are like almost same. They are the same. same. One particular pattern. Why not they form a regular rhythm? Once you understand and you are able to explain to someone else, then there can be nothing better like that. You will be able to answer any question that comes through. Okay, see the railings over here are definitely form a regular rhythm, but these railings are not what is dominant over here. The dominant factor over here are these paintings. That is what we are looking at. So, like they comprise more of the composition, and that is what we should talk about. So, how, like, you know, I told about that when you are identifying the four important visual principles, you need to identify which are the four most important. Same way, you need to identify on what factor you should judge. So, over here, uh, paintings talk about that. All our paintings, but nothing are the same. Nothing is being repeated. No particular pattern, no particular format. Hence, it's random. Not going into the other examples, hope it's clear with you guys. Anyone who is there who is not clear with any one of these examples present. Everything is clear? Yes, no, fine. Some examples from nature, pretty definitive, like, you know, about uh, how random rhythm is being achieved. And it's a very simple example. Most of the things that you get in nature will be random itself. Nothing can be really regular. That's not really possible. Okay. This is a like you know school of dolphins in a sea. So they are one. Uh, we cannot tell uh, that this particular line will jump now after that. This line not possible. Hence it's random. Now we have something as graded rhythm. Very simple to understand. A uh, graded rhythm. I am only explaining how is it. You need to identify that either it will be in descending or in ascending. So it will be like kind of a stack thing. Like one thing stacked upon each other. And like, you know, first larger, then smaller, then smaller, then smaller. This is what we usually see. Now you cannot, uh, like descending to ascending is what we usually see in terms of structure. Because, you know, you cannot really have a structure where the bottom part is thinner like this and top part is bulkier. Even though there are structures like, you know, which are built like that, that is an exception, but not really. So anything in terms of things, repetitive elements, but arranged in a graded format or in a like, you know, Ascending to descending order, that is when we identify them as graded rhythm, name of the structure, Karthik. Name of the structure, Karthik. Which structure, sir? This one, this one, which is selected on screen now, this one. Which Located? Dubai. Okay, come on camera. It is easy, like you know, to have a communication. Okay, what about this one? Kutubina. Located where? Uh, southern part of Delhi. Okay. Other two structures. One first one Arya, second one Mac. Sorry, I don't know. Both of them. I didn't. 
Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Anyhow, you know about the structure? No. You guys should have just I like. Know. Yeah, okay. Karthik, you told you know. Tell me which one located where. Huh? Bottom uh, in Nepal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bottom in Nepal. Name is. Uh, yes. Maybe it's. Yes, sir. I told you guys about Karthik Pola Temple. Pola Temple located in Nepal. Okay, and uh, built by King Bhupatindra Malla. Uh, you are seeing and telling me, right? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, what about this top one? What about the structure? Wang Jing Soha Soho. Okay, fine. Uh, now, this is the Wangshou T3 tower located in China. It's a skyscraper. Okay. Um, wait, I'm trying to find a particular structure. This particular, uh, like one, what is the name of this man? National Museum. This is what? This one, this one, this. You told what is written over Gal there? Galaxy Soho. So Galaxy, Galaxy Soho, Soho located in Beijing, China, this is made by Zaha Hadid. This is one of the similar kind of structures itself. This is the Wangzing Ta Soho Tower located in China, Beijing, China again. So these are all similar kind of structures. So this is like a skyscraper community kind of thing. So I expected that you should know about that. Anyways, uh, let's move ahead and so I guess uh, graded rhythm is the concept clear? Yes or no? Tell me. Yes. Then what about this one? I'm looking for an answer from... Okay, Mac only. You only go ahead, Mac. Uh, uh, so how is graded rhythm being achieved in this one? This composition. The size is decreasing. The tables are... But tables are of the same size, right? The tables but cannot be like visual. You know, visually, when we see it, it looks like absolutely, size decreases. Absolutely. That's the answer I was looking for. So, how is that being created visually? What is this phenomena of visual effect called? Or what do you describe it as? How do you categorize this effect? You should know about how many of you know about perspective. Arya, you know about perspective. Karthik, you know about perspective. Yes or no? I know about perspective sketching, like something like that. Yes, yeah, sketching is like it's a theory. Then the from that we come to the sketch. Perspective is from the point of view, from uh, the point from where you see an object, how it looks. Okay, so we will have a quick explanation on this. Board is visible over here, right? So we will, uh, I will just move it a bit far. Is the board visible? Clearly. Is it visible or not? Tell. Yes, sir. Just make sure you have a look at this quickly. Okay. So, uh, like when we are talking about perspective, okay, we should we will have to remember a few things. Now, uh, so I'm just describing over here, not writing anything because it will be a mirror image for you guys. So you won't be able to understand the letters that I write. So first thing is in perspective, it is one point. Okay, so one point perspective is one thing. Uh, wait. So there is one point perspective that is possible. Now, what is one point perspective? Very simple to understand. There is either one or there is two or there is three. Can anyone tell me how you can see these numbers? Like, you know, actually how they are. It's mirror image. Can you see the numbers over here? Can you see them as one, two, three or not? Yeah, we can see. 
you can see them. How come you see them as one, two, three? I just told they will come as mirror image. Why yeah. not? Why not mirror image over here? There is mirror image, but we are like, uh, we can identify it. You should see it like this actually. One, two, three. Yeah. Why are you seeing this like this? The very simple reason is because I wrote it the other way around. You should be able to find this. I wrote it the other way down, so you are able to identify it. So if the one, two, three, uh, like, you know, there are three kinds of perspective. There is not actually three. If we go in detail, there is four point perspective. There is zero perspective as well. We will not discuss regarding that. Not important for your exam. What is one point? What is two point? And what is three point? Very simple to understand. What, perspective, what do you mean by perspective? When you talk about something, and this is for example, there is a fight going on between two friends. You need to explain, right? So you will tell that like, you know, from my point of view, I feel like, you know, this person is right or that person is right. So perspective is very simple to understand. Nothing but one point perspective. There is only one point, one like, you know, vanishing point. Okay. Let me make the lines. So there, there is a point like this known as V1. This is vanishing point. Oh, okay, okay. I shouldn't write. So there is V1. V1 is the vanishing point that you have. Okay. Uh, from this point, everything. So the point, one basic concept about one point perspective is when you look at it, you will see that everything is originating from this one particular point. Relation to this in terms of real life example, how a railway track is there. If you see that this is a road, okay. Uh, let's assume you are walking through and there is a whole community passing by the road. And if they are trying to make a composition in one way, one point. Okay. Excuse the drawing right now. It will be a bit rough. Everything will be in respect with the lines that originate from these two points, there can be an infinite number of lines originating, not only the buildings, the doors, the everything. Okay. This is how one point perspective. So it means you are able to see one dimension of the objects. Okay. In one point, it's a one view. This is all about one point perspective. This is known as the vanishing point. Wait, I will use the red color pen. This is the vanishing point from where it originates. This line is known as the line of horizon, this particular line. Okay. This is known as the line of horizon. Why vanishing point? Because though, if though they are not parallel, it seems like that everything is like, uh, so, uh, like, you know, though they are parallel, it seems like everything is going and merging at one point. So that point at an infinite distance is known as the vanishing point. That is V1. This is for one point perspective. Please turn on your cameras. I shouldn't say this every day. I don't know why you guys are turning it off all this. Coming back to two point perspective. What is two point? So if vanishing, uh, one point perspective is one vanishing point, what about two point perspective? How many vanishing points will be there? Two vanishing points. Two. So yeah, definitely. Now in two point perspective, line of horizon, B1, B2. Okay. These are your two uh, like vanishing points. You have a central point, a straight line from this V1. You are like, you know, now drawing lines for your structure. Now this can be several different ways. I'm making it like, now let's assume there is a house over here. You want to construct a like, you know, so there can be, as I mentioned, there can be several lines. So depending upon my requirement, I'm building this. If you want to make a second floor, second floor can come up. Okay, now let's assume we want to have a compound wall. You will be able to see it in two dimensions. How two dimensions? What I told previously, it was this kind of structures, right? 
originating from one particular point. This was in one. Now, why? How two dimensions? How two dimensions? Can you tell me? If this is one, how this is two? The pictures, like the dimensions, are moving in endwards of. In x and y axis, both the ways you can see this. Okay, this is two point perspective. Two vanishing points, one line of horizon. This is how it's being made. If we talk about three point perspective, very simple again. How many vanishing points? Three. Then, so how it will be made? For example, in three point, we can have the aerial view, bird side view, or like you know the warm side view. These are the usual terms that were used when NASA used to give drawings. They used to ask this question, like prepare you to be made. Over here, this is the kind of thing that we are having. Over here, we have our V one, we have our V two, and our V three is located somewhere over here. Clear? Now, if we are making the structure, this is what we are looking at. Now our, our structure will come up. Let me make the structure different. Now, this is not the absolute one, but this is how the structure has to be obtained. Okay. Now, this is a bird's eye view. The top part will be larger, bottom part will be thinner. This is how, if you look at a building from the top, if you are flying on a plane or like, you know, if you are, if you are on top and if you look at that particular building, this is larger skyscraper. This is how it will look, right? There can be the entrance, there can be several, like, you know, small windows, doors over here, and that is how it is. Now, if the same thing has to be reversed, nothing else. This is one structure. It can be something like this. Just we are reversing it up. V1, V2. Oh, sorry. Over here, you will not get facing. So, your v, V1, V2, V3 is over here. Now, this structure goes up. And we are come ending the structure somewhere over here. Okay. This is how it looks if it's like you know, the own side view. Clear? These are the three kinds of perspectives that we have. As mentioned, there is zero point, there is four point as, as well. We will not go into that right now. Okay. So these are some of the things in terms of perspective. I hope you guys will remember. Uh, I will try to like, you know, have a recorded lecture on this as well on your app because this was a real quick discussion. We are in a crunch of time. So we are going in this way, but the, I hope that there will be a recorded lecture that we, I will upload. Now coming to, these are the three kinds of perspectives that we have. So going back to uh, our point of discussion was this particular section, right? Coming to this one. So how, what kind of perspective do you see over here? It's one point perspective. One point or two point? Which one? One point. One point, absolutely. So due to the, the at one point perspective, what is happening? Due to that one point perspective, you now see these particular things as in that they are originating at a far distance, they are moving at some point, and the, the objects which are located from you, they look smaller. The ones which are closer to you, they look larger. It's a very natural phenomenon. Hence, it gives you a sense of graded rhythm. Got it? Clear? Fine. We move ahead with few other examples. These are all there. Now we have something as graduated rhythm. Uh, Karthik, what is graduated rhythm? Real quick. Tell quickly so we can move ahead, discuss like, you know, quite a lot, uh, other number of things as well. What is graduated rhythm, Karthik? Quickly. Don't know, sir. Have you gone through this PDF or not? Have you gone through this PDF or not? 
so it don't help in exam very frankly like you know this is the final outcome that you will have as mentioned earlier also now anyone watching this class recording you guys over here many students do ask before exam that what is the highest marks from the institute or like you know can i get this marks and above it all depends on you if you are not putting efforts and like you know you are here for two years still you cannot perform so if you have not been through this after like you know although already completion is done third time i asked you to go through this you have still not gone through nothing can be done okay uh like this was just for you to go through and understand that's all okay um uh mahak what is graduated with them elements have same similar shape and form not clear how is graduated with them actually actually uh, all the elements will be similar to shape and form when the size will maybe so there is a very simple thing that you should talk in the very beginning all the kind different kinds of rhythm that we have discussed till now graduated rhythm is something where you will see everything included together is it or is it not yes that's the very simple answer so wherever you feel now how do you identify graduated rhythm in exam if first of all very clear for this graduated rhythm to be there in objects if it's there if you get the sense or feeling where you are not able to identify you are getting a confusion between both the things are present this might happen that might happen in that case it's always graduated where there's a confusion there's a graduated rhythm as simple as that to understand is graduated rhythm evident in all the examples that you see on screen right now any doubts in relate in like uh, relation with any of these examples where you would like to ask your doubt that okay i really cannot find out graduated rhythm over here anything is there all the other three kinds of rhythm what we have discussed till now everything is included together in graduated rhythm clear yes yes Let's go ahead in these examples are you able to see how is like you know things uh, are going in an ascending to descending order whereas on the other hand they are not at some point like you know you will not be able to identify so for example the kind of feeling that you might get at the initial stage is that it's kind of regular then the thing will come that you no know, at some point they are also becoming like you know larger to smaller hence like you know it's graded so graded regular two things as soon as you have got you go for graduated itself don't look for the other thing then it will be a hassle because random rhythm you really cannot find it out over here see over here similar kind of elements no such pattern followed but like you know they are moving from ascending to descending or something like that so re re uh, random and you are graded hence you are graduated okay few other examples over here i guess you are clear with all these examples any doubts no doubts okay. we move ahead what is unity area okay unity is something that uh... follows the pattern and gives the uh, just a minute have you gone through the pdf yes yes i have gone through it if you have gone through you are telling it wrong oh what does the very literal meaning of what is the very literal meaning of unity what does unity stand for or stands for great uniform identity huh Correct uniform identity. I didn't get who was it, Mahak? Right? Please, can you be a bit louder and come again once? Correct uniform identity. Correct uniform identity. Okay. Can you describe it? Can you give a bit of description related to the same? There will be a logo for particular things. Okay. See, this is the basic problem, you know. <clears throat> While you are explaining, give a very simple example, so or so, like you know, explain it in such ways where lame person can also understand. What is unity? Literal meaning of unity. Unity means togetherness, right? If you and your family stands for one cause, at you like you know, which is occurred with your neighbor, you all are united. If like you know, there is an India-Pakistan match going on, and all the Indians are like you know, in the uh, in one podium, they are all with the flag, they are all wearing the same kind of T-shirt. what is that unity same kind of objects or similar objects all united together all clubbed up together is all what we know about unity 
Did you get it? Clear or not? Are you clear about unity? Yeah. Oh, fine. So over here, sense and feeling of the security, care and protection through design, power, uniform, grant, togetherness, safety used to create uniform identity, bonding and responsibility, tell story of legacy, organize, dynamic, go get it feeling. At least one element should be repeated. Remember this thing. At least one element should be repeated throughout the design, space, member, categories, etc. Not necessarily there should be a pattern, but they should be repeated, giving you a sense of unite or like they are all united together. Okay, here are a few examples where you see a very good uh, or a, like the very vivid example of unity is present. Uh, these are flaps like, you know, wind flaps used in front of apartments. They give direction to the wind, hence leading it to flow into your room or so. These are used in modern structures and complex, complex buildings or so, apartments. And they give a very nice, uh, like, you know, uh, futuristic look as well. Now, for example, see this community. It's an American housing community, let's say, or a European housing community. All houses look exactly the same. Hence, they're giving you a sense of uniteness, of, like, you know, a sense of unity. Okay, similar examples over here. Uh, see, over here, the, the particular sketches. Are you getting the sense of unity in all the examples? This one, I guess, we discussed in morning itself in terms of your symmetrical balance, right, man? Yeah. So, are they giving you a sense of unity all gathered together for a particular religious purpose? Got the mean, like you and Karthik got the mean, right? Okay. Over here, similar kind of examples over here in terms of in a brand or how they display a certain thing for people to like, you know, look at it, get attracted or so. So when people are getting attracted at this certain decoration, which is there in a mall, what is the other design principle that you can also see over here? Yes. What is the other design principle that you can see over here? Mac, we discussed it in the morning itself. Mac, are you there? Please come up. Yeah. What do, what do we see over here, apart from unity? If this decoration is there in a mall at the entrance itself, okay, people will, what will happen to the people? They will first look at it, right or wrong? Yeah, they will first look at it. attracts the people's attention. It attracts their attention. So what it is being highlighted, hence it is being, it is being what? What is the name of the principle? Mm. It is being emphasized? Yeah, yeah, emphasis. So emphasis is present over there. Now, when you see this one, remember, this is just for an example I told. I gave you a, like, you know, a scenario. In a mall, you have this. So it, then the whole setting is the mall, what you see in the composition, right? Over here, you just see this. So there is no, you, like, you know, emphasis over here. No one object is being emphasized. Are you getting my point? If this as an object is present in a mall, then it is be like creating emphasis. But over here right now, what you see, there is nothing as a, like, you know, to be emphasized. Clear? If over here there was a red color face, then the very first look would have gone to that. Then that was being emphasized. Clear? Clear? Yes or no? Yes. Similar kind of examples in terms of your unity, same kind of elements kept together at a certain zone. So it's easy for people to like, you know, go through, look for the kind of uh, like the stuff that they want to buy. Hence, sense of unity is being followed. Few other examples, go through it. This is the example that I was talking about in a match, how everyone irrespective of their cast grid reason and everything, they all gather together and they cheer for the one team. Okay, best other example is also like, you know, friends. And the army is the best sense of unity where everyone is united for the fight they have ahead. Okay. Now we have something over here as contrast. Okay. The, uh, I guess there is something like uh, this part is actually removed. We'll check it out. So this is contrast. What is contrast? When two things in terms of their color, shape, form, like anything, texture at par with each other, then contrast is there. So what do you think right now, how you see me 
Am I visible? Am I visible to both of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there contrast in my composition or not? Am I creating contrast with this particular background or not? May? Yes, sir. Karthik, what do you think? Am I creating contrast or not? Yes, sir. How I am creating yes, contrast? What is the material? What is that particular thing? That helps me create contrast without which you won't be able to see me. Very simple thing. Background is, yes. Background is lighter than your. Uh, you are not audible clearly. Please go ahead. Background is lighter color than your t-shirt. Oh, leave dress. everything in it. What is the particular thing due to which you are able to see anything over here? Even you are able to see yourself because of that particular thing. Mahak, please uh, come on camera and like just put yourself. This is a like, you know, mutual discussion. Please unmute yourself and tell. What is there due to which you can see? If that thing is not there in this room, then you won't be able to see anything. Very simple. Light. Absolutely, light. So without light, you won't be able to see anything. Light helps creating contrast. Contrast helps creating emphasis. We discussed. Without light and shadow effect, will you be able to distinguish between me and the wall? Without light, if it's completely dark, remember, completely dark I'm talking about. Not, not a refraction of light coming from the window also. When it's pitch black, you will, will you be able to dis, like, you know, understand anything over here? No. Same in the other way around, if over here there were 2,000 bulbs, you know, those bright 1,000 watt or 2,000 watt bulbs over here, focused like this towards the camera. What you will see? Everything as plain black, plain white, no contrast. Same thing goes. So when the, due to light and shadow contrast is created, what did I told about to tell about contrast? I do? contrast helps create contrast means differentiation. Since there is a difference between this play, background and me, you are able to differentiate and you are able to tell that like you know okay this is sir this is wall I am able to see sir. Otherwise like you know I wouldn't know there might be a ghost uh, taking the class. So same way this is how this is occurring now. We need to understand that what is emphasis? One object is being highlighted. That is where our first attention is going to. Then what is it doing with its surrounding? Is it creating a huge amount of contrast? Hence it is being highlighted? Yes or no? Yes. Usually like you know you might, you might have heard your parents talking about that if you are going through a road and if you see that there is a mob or like you know there is some kind of uh, fight or something like that going on, a danga kind of thing or all happening on road. Keep stay aside, like you know, keep, try to stay low and move, walk away from that place, right? Now, for example, if tomorrow Karthik stands up and tell that, hey man, what are you doing? So what will happen to you? You will be highlighted with a mic in hand. If you just peek over there, you will be highlighted and everyone will jump on. That is where you are creating emphasis on yourself. You're creating that emphasis because you are the one with that mic who is speaking. Hence, like, you know, you are creating contrast with rest, all the people who are present over there. Is the concept clear? Why I am giving all these expression uh, examples where your face is giving a simple smile is just because so it goes over here and you are able to implement it on the paper. So is it clear or not? Fine. Yes, sir. Let's go back to our PDF. So over here, Contrast is very vivid. Now, when contrast in a composition, whatever you see, whichever composition you see, you will see contrast. Otherwise, you cannot see the composition. You cannot distinguish between the different objects in a composition. That doesn't mean that always whatever design, whenever they ask you mark the most important uh, visual principles over here, you will not go for contrast. What I told, what is more dominant? So if you feel in a composition, contrast is what is more dominant, go for it, mark it out. Clear? Go through all this text back at your home, understand the concept. Over here, the bright red colors are creating contrast at par with each other. 
Over here, the roofs are creating huge amount of contrast with the walls of the building. Over here, this L'Oreal uh, building, which you have this particular glass panels, they are emitting the light during the night time. The rest of the part is uh, like dark. Hence, it is creating huge amount of contrast with, uh, first of all, building is creating contrast in comparison with the other neighbor nearing buildings. And this particular panels are creating contrast with its uh, like, you know, uh, concrete blocks. During the daytime, this uh, like, you know, uh, black, uh, this panels which are emitting light right now, glass panels, they will be pitch black because they will be reflecting light. There will be no light coming from the interiors when there is perfect sunlight. Whereas this particular walls also, this concrete will be white and hence they will create contrast. Similar thing goes for all these compositions. Go through it. Have a look at these compositions. Try to know what are these compositions all about. Now we have gradient and all. We don't need to go through really at this point of time. I will just tell you about one important thing. What is texture? What is texture? Any idea? Any concept about texture? Yes or no? Roughness of uh... texture is all about the surface. Texture is all about the surface. How you have seen over there in that second, like right now the uh, screen which I closed, right hand side composition. There was a different texture. So for example, I will show you guys texture. Wait, give me a minute. Can you see the laptop right now? Yes or no? Yes, sir. This is a different texture. This is a different texture. Are you able to distinguish between the two surfaces? Yeah. These are the texture of different surfaces. Now, this is matte finish. This is glossy. This is a different texture. Are you getting it? So all these are different set of textures. Now, again, if we have to look for something, I really don't have anything else over here. Okay, yeah, this one I have. Can you see this? There are line-like things. Can you see this particular place? This is again a different texture. Got it? Texture is the kind of like, you know, surface that any object has. Very simple thing to understand. Concept of texture is clear? Yes or no? Clear or not? Clear. Yes. Fine. Let's move ahead. And let's quickly check for the other things that we have in. Uh, we will go by all these examples. Go through back at your home, check out these things. So over here, several different textures are being used to form these compositions. You see dots, you see lines, you see crisscross. Understandable, right? What I'm trying to mean, different textures are forming this set of compositions. Bad contrast. Can you see the effect of bad contrast? What I just told right now. What are you seeing over here in this composition? Hard to read. Now, if I remove this, H-A-R-D till you can see, two is very hard. The O is... R, E is definitely not at all visible. A is little bit. B is again little bit visible. In all these a set of other examples also, can you see the effect of bad contrast? If the particular thing which you want to see doesn't create a good amount of difference with its background wherein you are able to identify that separately, then contrast is not present. Is it clear? Yes or no? Clear? Yes, sir. Fine. This is what bad contrast does. Highest amount of contrast. Black and white are not colors. We will discuss this again in color theory. Black and white are the extreme amount of tint or shade. So highest contrast is created among black and white. Best example is over here. First thing. Second thing, you guys are having an exercise to do back at home once this class is over. Can you see this wall over here? Can you see this wall? You will find something like this. One simple color. It can be something like this on the table, what I have on my table. It can be something like this wall. You will find one simple color. Click a picture. Take your camera, click a picture of this one color. You are just like, you know, particular thing. Uh, you will click a picture with your camera. You will click a picture. Okay. Over here. Now, what I have on my camera is this. Can you see? One single color. Yes. You will go and edit. Yes. 
you will go for add, like however it is you will go for edit and you will see something as brightness in one composition you will increase brightness see i increase brightness okay still green you can see i clicked on save now in this newly saved composition i will again go into edit and again i will increase the brightness full what you can see white is it or is it not yes yes this is what we call as tint adding white to a color when like you know increases the tint okay so white is the extreme tint and black is extreme shade now for the same composition i will go to adjust go to absolute like you know still you can see slightly slightest green i decrease the brightness to zero first i will click on save for this new composition i will again go and decrease this brightness to zero again can you see black yes or no yes yes black and white are extreme tint and shade of any particular color nothing else clear and black and white creates the maximum amount of contrast whatever this pointers i am telling make sure you remember because this is what you will need for your exams these are not just discussion okay it over here if you able to understand yeah please go on increasing of black is saturation saturation is the intensity of color we will discuss it in color theory again i am telling saturation is this what do you, what what is the color of the bottle yellow is, yellow it stands for very less saturated yes this part comparatively more saturated this neck this area i am talking about very carefully yes sir this one again more saturated top part this this part rim again comparatively more saturated yellow color density of yellow is more or less that is saturation in adding black or white to a color is like you know uh, the tint or shade in increasing or decreasing the value of a color clear yes clear yes. over here you get some color chips to understand how they act with like you know one is good contrast next one is bad contrast okay low dynamic range and high dynamic range is nothing but dynamic range is addition of a gray, gray film so level and dynamic range are the value of shade saturation tint in respect to the greatest contrast so level and the dynamic range of value or shade and saturation tint in. so for example you if you have a kind of slight black, a grayish film you will see that everything looks kind of blurry that is what is low dynamic when you see it in high dynamic definition that is known as high dynamic range clear over here you are having few questions to solve go through them try to solve it discuss it if you have some doubt discuss it in the next class any doubts any queries for this particular class you have anything is there no sir kartik any queries any questions what sir fine okay thanks a lot guys that's all for this particular class make sure any student watching this class in recorded format go through each and every one of this points that i have talked about in this particular class any doubt is there let us know in the chat section in your app connect to us directly over the contact number which you have along with you if you are watching like someone who is watching a part of this session in as a recording in on youtube contact number is there in description box whatever doubts you have clarify it go through it understand the concept then try to answer a question don't cover over one part then jump to the other part understand each one of these points which are discussed in a class because each one is important we discussed perspective we went to contrast we discussed in terms of like you know how uh, something related to color value saturation everything each and every point is important for your exam you should be able to relate that with practical life examples once you are able to do that you are good to go for your exam and you can crack it at least make sure like you know you are understanding these things trying to relate and hence you will be able to implement it when you see a composition in your exam i hope it's clear to everyone both of you who are over here in this class right now you are able to understand and if there is any doubt please let me know it's all clear for today's class right yes sir okay right. that's all for this class see you all tomorrow and thanks a lot yeah just a minute yes, i will sir. end the recording over here uh, everyone watching this class recording that's all for this class thanks a lot